Good afternoon. I'm Pratap Singh Gaikwad and welcome to another episode of the Buggy Khana. This afternoon, we're at Mr. Goenka's private facility where he houses his collection. And I'm just about to take you for an in-depth conversation with him. So please follow me. Welcome, Maharaj Kumar Ji. Thank you it's very a pleasure much. to have you. Thank you so much. And uh, welcome back to the Bagi Khana. It's my pleasure. I mean, this is like being in, in a candy store. I mean, I really wouldn't know where to begin, where to end. And I mean, if you left me alone in here, I probably wouldn't come out for another month. I can speak about myself. I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could make this my bedroom. <laughs> So thank you so much for uh, for having us and giving access to our viewers. You always have access. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, as I mentioned, I mean, there is it's such a large and such a varied collection that uh, I mean, we could go on forever and ever. So I thought that, you know, instead of going through everything, if we begin by sort of focusing on a couple of special cars, and when I say special, you know, something that sort of began your journey into becoming the collector that you are. And some cars that, you know, have, have, a, have a close uh, association and a story for you. Well, uh, some of my favorite cars are in this very room. And uh, it might surprise a few of your viewers, but I can tell you, my favorite car is my first Fiat that I ever drove. It's a 1963. The first car that I, my mother owned, which I drove to school myself when I was all of eight years old. <laughs> I learned my work on it. I learned to the mechanicals on this very car. And it's so sentimental to me. I still will never part with this one. So this is one of my favorites. And then of course, my first vintage car uh, which I possessed was this Bentley here. It's a 1935 Bentley, a Parkward convertible. Mechanically in probably the best ever Bentley that India would have today. Uh, you can trust this car and go anywhere in the country. I drive her uh, in you know, large rallies in between states and, uh, and not less than 140, 150 kilometers, right. which American cars of the 40s and 50s find difficult to keep up with. But this is my pet car because I learned restoration on this car. Okay. Experimenting and learning. I got it right, fortunately. I think I did because that's what people tell me. So this, this was a, a car that was part of your family? It used to be a part of my family, but I had a very, uh, shall I say, greedy member who had possession of it. Okay. I had to actually pay her to get it. So I paid for this car, it didn't come free. But she was with the family throughout. She was brand with the family through. Brand so that makes it again, it gives you that yes. special emotional con uh, connect. And some of the trips that you've done with her, sir? Uh, we've done many trips. I've uh, driven all over south with it. We did a Rajasthan trip with this. Mm -hmm. I've driven this car uh, between uh, Delhi and uh, Corbett once. So I've, you know, she's been all over the place. Right. And when I was young, I used to go from Chennai all over the south. Was this the original uh, color, the specific? This car actually had, uh, I think it was burgundy on the fenders and the body. Right. Uh, we, I made it uh, a two-tone, but this was restored. Uh, the paint job was done like 35 years ago. And as of now, I've kept the patina as it is. The little chrome is faded, the paint is faded, but she's a runner. 
right. I want her to be the way she is. And who who did the painting 35 years ago? I had some boys around the place who that that, that was how we all did it in those days. Right. <laughs> and it's new co paint. It's not modern paint. And I mean, looks as you rightly said, the patina etc. looks very right and correct. And most importantly, as you said, she's a runner. And they're mechanically very sound. My closest uh, uh, connect on a, with a vintage car, my emotional connect is only with this one. Right. The rest of them are very nice cars, some of my favorites, for example. The Datiya Packard is a favorite, uh, the Travanco Rolls is a favorite. But the car I enjoy driving a lot these days is my E-Type. Yes. Uh, which is a convertible 71 V12. Right. I believe you have, you have two of these. I have two of them, I'm fortunate. And the soul and a, shall I say, a source of envy to many people. Well, one is a sedan and one is the convertible. So, right. And the uh, convertible obviously is more your favorite. I prefer the sedan oh, because I drive faster than that. <laughs> Safer. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is definitely one of my. Uh, and how cars. long have you had uh, this one? Well, the f sedan was the first V12 in the country. Right. And I got her in the 80s. Okay. After that, uh, I found this much later, but since it was a convertible, I had to have it. The other car I really enjoy driving is this uh, Studebaker. Right. It's, it's supposed to belong to Saddam Hussein at one time. When the palace fell, uh, these cars were stolen from the palace. Right. And sold in Dubai. Okay. By some dealers. So they were more interested in the Ferraris and supercars. Right. Uh, two of these old, poor old vintage cars were just given away virtually. Okay. So I wrote to the government, got permission to bring in a few cars, right. got an import license and brought them in. But that's special, I mean, ex-owner Saddam Hussein. Yeah, Saddam Hussein. That's, you know, that's the other thing, sir, that, you know, I'm seeing a lot of this, you know, this, the history of cars, the, the provenance that cars come with. And now they've started to play, a, you know, a big role uh, in, in the market, in the valuations. I mean, when you, I mean, we're all here for the love of the cars, but one can't ignore the commercial side of it as well. Well, I would say the commercial side is incidental for a lover like you and me. Right. But the truth is, yes, it's a fact that, you know, uh, provenance matters, quality of restoration matters, history matters, the right. story behind the car matters, and they all take the value up, I suppose. Yeah. No, I mean, you look at the car, you, you know, it's stunning, you like it, you like the work, and the minute you say, ex Saddam Hussein, mm. It suddenly it's sort of suddenly. piques your interest even <laughs> even further, and uh, you know I mean it's it's these stories actually that uh, you know really sort of uh, bring these cars alive. I feel absolutely. There's another very interesting car here which we are missing out. Yeah. It's probably the only running Citroen DS in the country. There are a couple of them around, but none of them are runners. This is a fully restored DS. Right. And, uh, wow. Immaculate. Immaculate. I mean, you know, most of these cars can win competitions wherever they go. Right. They've been restored so perfectly yeah. uh, by the book. Correct. Uh, I mean, everything looks perfect. The interior yeah. and... Uh, I mean, the stance of this car, you know, that's... Yeah, it has three levels, right. lowest, the middle and the high level, depending on the terrain you're trying to drive on. And I recall from an earlier interview of yours, where you had also mentioned that she can actually run on three... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, we, in one of your uh, episodes, we'll demonstrate. <laughs> yeah, we'll that take out a wheel and take her on the road. That would be very interesting. <laughs> 
But what's it, what's she like to drive? Is it is the suspension? It's okay. Suspension is amazing. You don't feel any bumps. You don't feel the speed breakers. Right. Because the design, I believe, was the design brief given was that this car has to be, and they had to create a car that can go on a paddy field, and the glass or water shouldn't fall. Right. And that well, that was a design brief to the engineers when they designed these cars. That's because what I, I mean that's interesting. But even the shape of the car, it's quite uh, unusual. unusual. The aerodynamic. It's very French. <laughs> kind of in its absolutely, and I think at that era, a lot of these cars were sort of they had a similar kind of a look. Quite a few, yeah. But there is some sort of a there is a connect in the connect design. In the design, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And when did when did you have her restored? So the restoration of this car happened in about four or five years ago. This car was under the ground when we got it. Okay. So some very famous people saw this car and said, "What is this doing here?" I said, I'm going to restore it. They looked at me and uh, with very polite people said, you've got to be a madman to even think of restoring this car. <laughs> I said, you wait and watch. <laughs> and how long did it take? I took a couple of, two or three years to do because a lot of parts had to come from donor cars and things like that. The hydraulics fortunately were, uh, the pipes were in place, but I had to replace all the pipes because of corrosion. So we did one pipe at a time replacement and then of course, all the accumulators and things like that, we had to buy them freely available from sources in the US. Okay. But still, the mechanical part must have been quite a challenge. The engine, fortunately, was a runner. Okay. Although the car was abandoned, went underground, right. but we uh, soaked the engine and fired her, she ran well. Right. The engine transmission is as the, it came. But the suspension part? That the suspension had to be rebuilt. That's the challenge. That's the tricky car. part in this car. Right. And all of that works. All perfectly. of that works now. And I, I have seen her being driven quite a bit. Well, we drive it. We went to Pondicherry recently for uh, South Rally. Right. Uh, I, we took the, the Citroen and the uh, Studebaker. Right. We were doing 150, 160, both the cars. Yeah. Nobody was able to catch up with us. <laughs> it depends wow. on the driver also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you have a bit of a heavy foot, I believe. Uh, Alan and me both have heavy feet. <laughs> <laughs> What about this car, sir? This is an import, okay. uh, one of my favorite shapes. Right. Uh, you know, we always dreamt of having a Lincoln V12. Mm. In those days, you couldn't find them in India. And the one or two pieces of junk that were here, people were asking a crore of rupees for it, right. which I thought was a joke. So we picked, we picked this car up in the US fairly yeah. reasonably. Yeah. It's a continental kit uh, coupe okay. and makes it very handsome, at least as far as I'm concerned. The yeah. fully restored in the sense that uh, this car was virtually a non-runner when it came, badly corroded with all the salt that you have. It came from upstate New York, so right. uh, it was badly corroded. We did everything, we did the work on, we worked on the engine. Everything was worked on, fully restored. Right. And I think quite a few of this model were actually imported through that People policy. People started uh, bringing this car a lot because they were available so cheap in the US. 